Hello, my name is Katie Dottie. I'm Julia Campbell, and I'm Julie Benson. And we are uh, nurse practitioner students at the University of Bellarmine, and we are here today to tell you about Lazarus and cold rooms, stress, and coping theory. Um, Lazarus was the one who originally began the research in stress and coping, then Folkman um, became one of his colleagues who further developed this theory um, after she was his PhD student. Um, and they originally began this research because they wanted to study the psychological and um, physiological effects of stress on the body and how coping strategies can positively or negatively affect stress on the body. Okay, um, so Lazarus and Folkman developed the process model of coping as a framework to explain a cognitive process that an individual goes through when facing a potential stressor. Um, so the first step of the process is the potential stressor, and uh, Lazarus and Folkman defined um, this is any environmental stimulus that causes any unpleasant feelings uh, in the individual. So when faced with a potential stressor, um, an individual begins with the process of primary appraisal, uh, which is where they determine uh, if the stressor has potential harm to their well-being. Uh, there's three different uh, categories that go along with this um, process. It's uh, the individual, individual determines if the event is irrelevant, meaning that it won't have any effect on their well-being. If it's stressful, which means that uh, it will have negative effects and can be harmful to their well-being, or if it's benign positive, which is where uh, the results of it will actually be positive. So uh, once the individual determines that the event is stressful, they then go on to determine if it is a harm, threat, or challenge. A harm uh, is what the individual has determined is something that uh, where the damage has already been done, like a loss of a limb or a loss of a family member. A threat uh, is the potential for harm. So say your car breaks down in a blizzard, um, you're at risk, you know, for frostbite. Uh, and then a challenge would be a situation where there's a risk for a negative outcome, but the opportunity is present to overcome that risk. So for example, taking a test. Uh, an individual also uh, focuses on what type of resources they have to help them through the stress stressful situation. Uh, so types of socio-ecological resources would be things like money and special training that an individual has, whereas personal resources are more things like social support or religion, things that the individual can rely on to help them get through the situation. Uh, so all these factors kind of go into uh, secondary appraisal. And once the individual has entered this uh, phase, they are starting to come up with, uh, pool their resources to come up with coping strategies to make it through this um, stressful situation. Uh, Lazarus and Folkman talked about two different types of strategies that individuals use. One would be problem-focused strategies, uh, which is where the individual manages the stressor through action in order to change the situation. So an example would be forming a plan or focusing on the next step. Whereas emotion-focused emotion strategies are when um, the individual regulates their emotions linked to the stressful situation by using things like distraction or talking with friends. Um, and you can also use both at once um, if necessary to help cope with the situation. Once the individual has uh, utilized their strategies, they move on to the outcome. And at the same time, they um, go into the process of reappraisal where they determine if the stress has changed or if they feel like the situation has improved. If they don't feel like the situation has improved, they go back up to the top um, and go through the process again. But if they do feel like they have managed the stress, then they've reached their outcome and uh, have positive potential. We are now going to go over three scenarios using the Lazarus and Folkman model of stress and First, we're going to talk about Jim. Jim has the final exam next week in nursing theories. He's very stressed about it. He's losing sleep. He can't even focus when he's studying because he's so stressed about the situation. So he's going to go through the steps to help him get to the outcome, which is hopefully uh, feeling good about the test. First, the primary appraisal. He does not see this test as irrelevant. He does not see it as a benign positive. Um, due to it is stressful, it is a real situation. Uh, he does see it as a stressful situation. It's causing him to lose sleep. He can't focus. 
He then thinks of it as a challenge. It is a challenge because um, passing this test, he's going to do well as a nurse practitioner. If he does not do well on this test, he could possibly fail the class and then will be behind the whole year, causing a whole new stressful situation. It is not a harm because it's not a past situation. It is not a threat because nothing is going to truly hurt him in the future if he does not do well on this test. It will just add some extra stressful situations which he'll have to use the coping strategy. But he does see this as a challenge and he's going to keep on going. Um, social, socio-ecological uh, resources that he's going to use. He's going to use his textbook. He's also going to look at his notes that he got in class. He's also going to use some personal resources. He decided that a peer study group would be the best way to help him study for this um, final exam. So by using all this, he's going to go to the secondary appraisal, which is um, using coping strategies to get to a positive outcome. He's going to focus on problem-focused strategies. First thing he's going to do, he's going to organize two study groups during that week. He's going to pick three of his peers, and they're going to set aside certain um, hours of the day to get um, through all the chapters. He's also going to set aside an hour of his own time each night to go over each chapter. Using these problem-focused strategies, he's going to get to the outcome. So the day before the test, he's going to go over the material, see how he feels about it. When he's going over the material, he reappraises and he realizes there is one chapter that he's not quite comfortable with. So then he goes over that material that night. The next day he wakes up, feels positive about the um, exam. He knows he's gonna do well now because he's gone through every chapter, feels good about it. Um, and so he goes to the test without having excess stress and he's able to do well on that final exam. The second scenario we're gonna discuss is a scenario which more emotion-focused strategies would be implemented. Um, so here we're gonna talk about Sally. Sally just lost her grandmother who she was very close with and she is emotionally distraught about the loss of her grandmother. She's very tearful, crying a lot, not eating well, not sleeping much. So we're gonna kind of go through this Lazarus and Folkman stress coping model um, with this scenario. So obviously the, the stressor is the loss of her grandmother. When she moves to primary appraisal, Sally would appraise this event as um, stressful. It's clearly not irrelevant because it's causing strife, a, a strong emotional reaction to her. And it's hard to view the loss of a loved one as a positive. Um, coming down further, she is going to view this as, as harm because it's not really a threat to her physical well being, as well as not really a challenge that she can overcome. It's something that's already happened and done. Then Sally will evaluate the resources she has available to her. Sally decides that she's most likely going to use her personal resources, meaning she's going to go to her support group, so her family, her friends. Uh, she also may go to her religious peers, religious leaders, um, to kind of uh, talk about the loss of her grandmother, share stories about her grandmother, share fun memories about her grandmother. This is going to help her move through her um, coping. Uh, and then we get to secondary appraisal. On secondary appraisal, Sally's going to evaluate uh, which uh, strategy she will use, problem-focused or emotion-focused. Again, because this is an emotional issue where she just needs to come to terms with her emotions rather than solve a problem, she is going to use emotion-focused strategies. Like I said previously, she's going to mostly rely on social support <laughs> to help her deal with this issue. Over time, she will get to her outcome where she feels like she has fully coped with the loss of her grandmother and she will go through reappraisal at that time. If she doesn't feel like she has met, well, she doesn't feel like she's coped with the loss of her grandmother in a healthy way, she may at that time feel like she needs to go see a um, grievance therapist or something like that, or she may decide, you know what, I've accepted this loss, I'm okay with it, and move on. And that is scenario two. Okay, the third scenario we're going to go over is going to be more of a threat type scenario. Um, and then in this scenario, we're going to use Bob. 
Paul is driving from Lexington to Louisville in blizzard-like conditions. He is trying to get to his nurse practitioner class that evening. And uh, on his drive down 64, he gets a flat tire and has to pull off to the side of the road, but he can hardly see in front of him. It's very dangerous road-like conditions. And Bob is out on the side of 64 trying to change his tire. So it's, that is the stressful situation. Primary appraisal, Bob will perceive this as a stressful event. Obviously, there's nothing benign or positive about it, and it's not irrelevant, but it's something he has to deal with and is dangerous. So like I said, this isn't going to be a harm, so it's not something that's a past event. Um, not necessarily a challenge because there's not really a great positive that comes out of it just to get to Louisville. Um, but this will be perceived as a threat because it's dangerous on the roads, he's pulled off to the side, but people, you know, aren't, don't have great control of their cars. So this could be perceived as, you know, a life-threatening type situation. Um, Socio-ecological resources Bob can rely on. Um, he's been trained how to change a tire before, so he knows what he's doing. Personal resources, um, maybe he has AAA and he calls AAA. Um, so this leads Bob to his secondary appraisal, where he will decide which coping strategies to use. Um, most likely, he's going to focus on the problem-focused strategies. He's going to, you know, he knows how to change a tire. He's going to use those skills to overcome this problem or this threat. He may use some emotion-focused strategies just to kind of like calm himself down and say, you know, I can do this. It's going to be fine. Kind of like positive self-talk. Um, at the end, once he gets his tire changed, he will get to his outcome and do some reappraisal. Hopefully, he changed the tire efficiently and the tire will work on these horrible road conditions and all is well. However, if the tire is not going to sufficiently work on these road conditions, then he might have to reappraise the situation and decide what to do from there, like maybe get to so now that we've gone through some uh, scenarios where people have used the process model of coping, um, we just want to point out that re several research studies have also been done using the process model of coping. For example, um, patients that have just gotten a diagnosis of cancer, uh, research has been done on the specific population to establish what some common forms of stress are in this population, as well as effective coping strategies that have made them feel like they have managed the situation as best as possible. This can be put into practice um, as a nurse or a nurse practitioner by um, when you get a patient that does receive a uh, new diagnosis of cancer, you can give them different coping resources to help them get through the situation as well. Now we challenge you to use the Lazarus and Folkman stress and coping model. We did give you a handout that you can look at and remind you of the steps, but this will be very helpful for us um, as graduate students to get through the next year and a half. It also can help us through the first couple years of becoming a nurse practitioner. It's very stressful to get into a new situation, so this could be very helpful to help decrease that stress and help your well-being. Um, it also works in everyday situations as we showed you with our examples. So I hope you use our model and keep the papers as a reference.